Look at this graph. It shows the demand for instant noodles in the top 10 highest consuming countries worldwide. And by the way, that's in millions. That means that the Chinese eat 44 billion servings of instant noodles every year. And worldwide, we eat 120 billion. They're even the most traded legal commodity in the US prison service. But just how did instant ramen come to take over the pantries of the world? Well, that story begins in the East, about as far east as you can go in Japan in 1958. And I want you to meet this guy, Mama Fukuando, who in 1958 set out with one very simple goal, to feed everyone in Japan. You see, this was Japan in the 1950s. Long lines of food, high unemployment, and lots and lots of excess flour from America. This is because after World War II, Japan's economy was struggling. There were lines for hours just to get a serving of noodles, and the Japanese government was trying to convince people to use all this excess flour for bread. But Japanese people didn't eat bread, they ate noodles. And Mamafuku believed that your culture and traditions were intertwined with your food, and if you gave that up, you were giving up a part of your history. So he set out with a simple mission, to create an easily accessible, cheap, and quick version of the Japanese noodle. Mamafuku worked for a year, when one night he witnessed his wife preparing dinner, and noticed the deep frying food removed the moisture from it. So he tried it with fresh noodles, and lo and behold, instant ramen was born. But not this. This is a cup ramen, and didn't come until later. This. Packet Instant Noodles, or more specifically, Packet Instant Chicken Ramen. Momofuku's company Nissin released the product, and within a year it had spread all throughout Japan. So clearly it was an instant hit, but why? Initially, this was much more expensive than fresh noodles. But this is just so convenient, and it's the same reason why I'll probably have a bowl of this later, rather than making fresh noodles and making stock, even though that probably wouldn't cost much more money. And you've probably got one of these in your cupboard, and you know that as well. This is so convenient, and people will pay for convenience. And that is a big reason why this so quickly took over the pantries of Japan. When Instant Ramen launched, no longer did people have to make sure they had fresh noodles on hand or wait in line for hours. They could keep dozens of packets in their cupboard, and maybe a midnight snack or a quick lunch in work, they could have it prepared in minutes. And I think that is the epitome of convenience. But look at this graph. This shows the distribution between packet ramen and cup ramen, and clearly cup ramen is the far more popular product. That's because Mama Fuku, even though this product was revolutionary, he wasn't done yet. He thought he could create something even more convenient. Instant ramen was great, but you had to open the packet and find a pan and heat the water up and pour in the seasoning and blah 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 blah. Wouldn't it be great if you could just... Enter Cup Ramen, or Cup Noodle as it was branded. Development on this began in the late 1960s, and by 1971, Nissin was ready to launch it to the world. And very quickly, it became more popular than its cousin, Packet Ramen. This began to appear around the world, in China, Singapore, Korea, Australasia, Europe, North America, South America, Africa, and space. Each country had its own form of Cup Ramen, sometimes made by Nissin and sometimes not. In the UK, this is probably the most popular brand. Pot noodle. It's objectively bad, but yeah, I kind of love them. And I don't think you could go in a single, even small corner shop in Britain these days without seeing at least two flavours of this thing, when 50 years ago it didn't even exist. By the way, I got some of this information from the World Instant Noodles Association, which yes, that does exist. It shares recent statistics on the consumption of instant ramen, but it also has a greater purpose, because of course, there are some downsides to instant ramen. Eaten alone, they definitely won't form part of a balanced diet, and the use of palm oil in the manufacturing and plastic in the packaging has a negative impact on the environment. So, in 1997, Momofuku founded the WINA to make both instant noodles healthier and more sustainable. According to the website, he said a company should develop itself as a forest, rather than a lone cedar tree out in the field. WINA is precisely the association for standing for this spirit. Momofuku's invention is probably up there with pizzas, curries, burgers, fried chicken, and fried rice as the world's favourite foods. But however much we may love them around the world, it'll come nowhere close to how much they are loved in Japan. Even though Vietnam recently took over South Korea as consuming the most instant ramen per capita every year at 87 bowls of instant ramen per person, it was Japan where they were invented, and Japan that they nursed back to health after the Second World War. They have museums dedicated to the stuff, and Momofuku is hailed alongside figures such as Einstein and Da Vinci. 
He's even starred in his own extremely cool anime short film, and I can't mention Instant Noodles without throwing in some b-roll of this guy, Naruto Uzumaki. And I think watching Naruto as a kid was where I first heard the word ramen. Thanks for watching, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you again soon.